we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dive we're gonna dive right into this, you guys. And uh, and I ain't got no jokes for you. This is serious business because there's serious things going on in this world right now. And uh, and I'm gonna we're gonna fight back just like the world's trying to fight back. Amen. So if there's a topic, it's called be alert. So First Peter five eight through nine, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Amen. As a Christian, we really must be aware that there really is an enemy. And he is exactly that, our enemy. He is not our friend. He has many names including Tempter, Satan, the Devil, Beelzebub, the God of this age, the Evil One, the Roaring Lion, the Accuser, the Father of Lies. Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5 that we need to be alert and of sober mind because this roaring lion that's prowling around, he's on the hunt, he's on the mission, he's on the hunt and he wants to destroy you, amen, any way he can. So be alert and of sober mind. In the year 1828, the Webster's Dictionary defined the word sober. Uh, number one, <laughs> number one, not mad or insane. Number two, not wild. Uh, or heated with passion. If you don't understand what heated with passion means, it means acting rationally or under the influence of intense emotion that obscures your reasoning or judgment. Number three, but having the regular exercise of cool, dispassionate reason. More simplified definition of sober, so we can all get it, is characterized by reason slash uh, sanity slash uh, uh, self-control. Reason, sanity, and, and self-control, Amen. Reason, if you might be wondering what that is, the power of the mind to think, understand, and form judgments by a process of logic, like thinking things through. Sanity, the ability to think and behave in a normal and rational manner. Self-control, the ability to control oneself, in particular, one's emotions and desires, or expression of them in one's behavior, especially in difficult situations. Definition of sober-minded in the Greek for all you theologians, you can find it in the Strong's number G3525, and the way you say it, and the way you say it is nafo, okay? Say nafo. Nafo. Sober-minded definition, to be calm and collected in spirit, to be calm and collected in spirit, to be temperate, dispassionate, circumspect. I didn't know what circumspect means. I could hardly even say it, but what circumspect means is to be careful to consider all circumstances and possible consequences. Amen? Amen. So let's read this again with that understanding of sober mind. First uh, Peter 5, 8 through 9, be alert and of sober mind, calm and collected in spirit, temperate, reason, sanity, and showing self-control. Careful to consider all circumstances and possible consequences because you're enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour, resist him, say resist him, resist. standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same thing as you are, same sufferings, okay? I believe these four things will help us strengthen us up to have a sober mind if we apply them. Number one, study the word. Number two, pray. Number three, put them into action. Four, be consistent. Pastor Omar or, or Pastor Isaac, one of them used the word compound consistency. Just think of that. When you think about consistent, compound consistency. So study the word, pray, put into action, and be consistent. When our thoughts and our focus is on Christ alone, nothing in this world can shake our faith. Amen. It may hurt a little, may bother us a little, but it won't shake our faith. You see, when we neglect to study the word, praying, putting it into action, and being consistent, we become like the ship in the ocean. Amen. That's tossed back and forth with no anchor. Nothing could help us. Then when the storms come and the waves crash, we will be easily pushed around and eventually destroyed, and then we'll sink. Amen. You see, if you don't take time to study your word, pray for understanding, put the word and what you're praying for into action and be consistent about it, well then, friend, you're setting yourself up to be in the flesh and lean on your own understanding when the pressures of the life come your way, when the trials come your way, when the situations that you have no control over come your way, amen? There you go, struggling again and defeated again, amen? Doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Definition of that is insanity, Amen. And that, my friend, is when the enemy is going to come, and that's when he's going to attack you. Amen. So please pay attention. There's no funny stuff about this. You see, the enemy wants to, the enemy wants you to doubt God. He wants you to doubt who God has called you to be. 
He wants you to live in fear, be alone, not in fellowship, and he wants you to fail. You see, friend, he wants you to have evil thoughts, deep, deep, be depressed, struggle with your identity. He wants you to feel like a failure, be sexual and moral, be promiscuous, commit murder, commit adultery, be greedy, be evil. He wants you to be dishonest, deceitful, and a liar. He doesn't want you to have any kind of accountability, friend. He, wants you, he doesn't want you to open up. You see, friend, he wants you to have envy, slander, pride, hatred, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make a haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord amongst brothers' friends. He doesn't want you to, excuse me, he doesn't want your marriage to prosper, or your children to prosper, or your family to prosper. For sure he doesn't ever want you to apologize or make amends. Does he want you to study the word, pray for understanding, put the word, what you're praying for, into action, be consistent about it? He doesn't want you to stand firm. Doesn't want you to have reason or sanity or self-control, friend. Listen, 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 listen. My wife's going to appreciate that. He doesn't want you to get help for your trauma, for those, core, for those core issues that you might have, that I have. Those things that you struggle with, he doesn't. He wants you to keep them to yourself so he can continue to remind you and accuse you and torment you because that's what he is. He's the accuser. Yes. Amen. So you see, when you don't study your word, when you don't pray for understanding, when you don't put the word and you're praying into action, and when you aren't consistent about it, then you won't be able to stand firm. And if you can't stand firm, how are you going to be able to resist him, friend? But when you do study the Bible, it says, 1 Peter 2.9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. And you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amen. That deserves a hand clap right there. <laughs> Romans 8, 37. We are more than conquerors, the Bible says. John 8, 30, 36 says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. John 3, 6 through 17 says, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Amen. First John 1 through 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Amen. Luke 9, 23 says, Luke 9, 23 says, then he, which is Jesus, said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must de deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Must deny themselves. John 8, 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have light of life. Philippians 4, 6 through 9 says, Be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication, let your petition or request be known unto God. The thanksgiving present your request unto God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Galatians 5, 16 says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Ephesians 4, 21 through 27 Please pay attention. When you heard about Christ and you were taught him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off the old self. Say, put off the old self. The old self. That's right. Which is being corrupted by his deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self. Say, to put on the new self. The new That's right. Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of each of you must, each of me too, must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of the one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Do not give the devil a foothold. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. Man, this is a lot right here, but I'm going to get it in there. 
Finally, and take this personal. Take it personal. This is for, for you guys. This is for me. Take it internally. Amen. This is for each and every one of you. It's for me too, right? Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggles. Not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world. And again, the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full, not half, but the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand. Stand your ground, you see, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth, okay, the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate right here, the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, amen, in addition to all that, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, evil one amen, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Fred, the word says that we are to show thyself approved, to be prepared in and out of season. Philippians 4, 8 through 9. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence in, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Number one, study the word. Number two, pray. Number three, put into action. Number four, be consistent. I'm going to close with this. God's word is true. It's inspired by God's breath. It brings comfort and healing. It reminds us of we are in Christ, who we are in Christ, provides guidance and can help us to know God's will and how to live. His word renews our minds. It can change the way we think and act and help us renew our relationship with God. Amen. It provides wisdom. It can help us handle life situations. It strengthens us, keeps us going to not give up and not give in to temptation. Say, not give in to temptation. God's word can fill us with hope and expectation by reflecting on his promises and his plans for us. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank you guys. God bless you.